What's up, guys? It's your boy Dorian here, and welcome back to another edition of Collider Mailbag. This weekend, Roka's out sick, so he had me take over as a host, and I just want to say thank you, Roka, for letting me do that. I'm here, and we're going to do some uh, questions. You know, I always send out some Twitter and Instagram questions, or call out for Instagram questions using the hashtag Collider Mailbag. Y'all sent out five great ones, so now I got my boy RB3 in here to hey. help me answer them. I think this is our first video together, man. It, 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 I think so, yeah. I mean, I've always been helping you behind the camera stuff. Yeah, but. You, yeah but now we I have to bring my boy on. We gotta, we're going to kill these questions. We're, gonna, we're about to make some moves. So Fire. are you ready? I'm, I'm ready. Let's go ahead and get this bread, my guy. Yeah. All right, so the first question is from Instagram. It says, it is from Elusive Rock. He says, hey, Dorian Parks, do you think Agent Coulson or any of the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. squad will show up in the MCU, Disney Plus, or otherwise? As always, stay sweaty. What do you think, my guy? Um, yeah, that's interesting, man. I, I honestly, I haven't watched Agents of Show. I watched the first two seasons, um, but I would, I would be interested to see a lot of those people come back. I know it's like a fan favorite show. Yeah, I know that's where they also introduced Ghost Rider, right? Yeah, I'd love to see that that guy come back. Um, I just from the clips I've seen, he looks fantastic, and um, I think they'll they'll, they'll 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 find a way to bring Agent Coulson back. Maybe as like a flashback. They kind of did with Captain Marvel, like to some extent. Yeah, see, too, so. yeah, I would, I would, I would love to see all of them. I, I think I said this on the previous mailbag, but I would love to see them all be incorporated into the Disney Plus shows because now like they're trying to go away from like the live action TV series on ABC and stuff like that and trying to bring it into Disney Plus so mm -hmm. it can all have that. It can all be under the MCU umbrella. I would love for them to try to incorporate, maybe do a spinoff Secret Warrior show because I'm you're mm -hmm. not you're going to you're going to watch the rest of the uh, the seasons of Agents of Show, right? right? You will. You will, right? Uh, well, well, yeah, sure. Yeah, you better. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So <laughs> <laughs> during the season they teased uh, for a couple episodes they teased uh, Agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. Uh, Secret Warriors like okay. team formation okay. so but they never really like dove back into it so I would love for them to do like a spinoff series of the Secret Warriors and have it be in the MCU universe because now especially with, with uh, Kamala Khan mm -hmm. getting her own show you could weave her in through that mm -hmm. and or introduce her through that and then have her go on to her own show or vice versa introduce her in our own show then have her come on to the Secret Warrior show but I definitely would love for them to try to find a way to interact to use these characters characters they don't even have to all be on the same show you can we throw in uh, Agent Coulson on Loki or something or that's, like yeah, yeah just that's like what I was gonna say they could probably sprinkle them sprinkle them out yeah way. they don't have to all be together like they're agents of shield they the shield goes across the universe so have them go sprinkle across the universe instead of just not using them because Daisy Johnson specifically she's one of the most powerful characters that's been introduced in the whole MCU world I swear like you you compare her power level to some of the current roster she would take out like 90 not 90 but like a good 75 percent of the team she could mm. take she could fight them so I'd say it's a waste of talent not to have her and also Chloe Bennett is the best um but anyway that's that's it for the Angel Shield rant we're gonna yeah, yeah that's all I, we're gonna have for I, today I, now I knew, I knew I was sitting next to an Angel <laughs> Shield fan so now, I can't I can't have nothing to add more than that all right let's go on to the next question <laughs> Um, okay, yeah, next question is from um, um, Austin um, Hogan316, and uh, this is also coming from Instagram, I'm assuming. Um, before the release of Knives Out, Ryan Johnson had discussed um, making more films with Daniel Craig's character. Now that the movie is a, is a success, will we see this come to, uh, come to pass? Hashtag Collider Mailbag. I really hope so, man. They, because Ryan Johnson, we actually did a, a Q&A with him at Arclight uh, twice now, so you can go check those out uh, for Collider FYC and just a regular screening. And both of those times, he just talked about how like beforehand like he was like yeah if this movie makes if it does well I would love to see another I would love to explore that more and it, it like he said it did it did well and the he already said in our interview with him he said that him and, and Daniel Craig have been talking they have some ideas so I couldn't even imagine what kind of story would take place next but I definitely want to see it because Knives Out it wasn't not necessarily on my radar I mean it was on my radar before like when it was announced, but once we got closer, once I actually saw it, I was like, damn, this is one of my, I think it's one of my favorite movies of the year. The script, oh, the, yeah. the comedy, I it, I did not expect it to be as funny as it was. So it really just surpassed my expectations. So I would definitely love to see another one of the, uh, an another, I don't even know if they would even, he said it's a, he has a different title in mind too. So I don't even know mm. if it would be Knives Out, right, the sequel, right, but right, what, what right. do you think about that? Yeah, no, I, I, I'd love to see that. I mean, I'm personally, I'm a big fan of like Sherlock Holmes. Mm -hmm. um, he's one of my favorite characters. And um, this is kind of an American version of that I mean they even make some references to Sherlock Holmes throughout the movie um, and I would love to see that carried through we haven't you know an American Sherlock Holmes especially with Daniel Craig who's British right. but he's doing this like funny 
uh, Southern, Southern draw, accent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so uh, I'd, I'd love to see that continue. Ryan Johnson, I've talked about it plenty of times. I love his other movies like Brick and um, and Brothers Bloom and Looper. And I think he's such a good genre filmmaker. I think that's why Knives Out is so good. Mm-hmm. Um, I think what's really great about Knives Out is that like Daniel Craig's character is kind of like a side piece, but there's right. still a bigger story like happening. And I'd love to see that kind of like anthology kind of series go on. Like have, see- have, yeah, have him be the side piece, but to a, mm-hmm. a bigger story. I, I, that's one of the things that really surpassed my expectation because when you, from the marketing of it, I'm a, a honest character. Yeah. You don't, you would you don't know you she's would, the star. You would not have any idea that she, like, especially the marketing. I think they did it so geniusously, like having her in the back, mm-hmm. like just like, really not paying attention to her character that much but then to have her like she I, I in my opinion she carry she essentially carries a movie she has the most screen time which I did not expect and I think she should get a best picture nomination I mean right. not best supporting actress nomination in my oh, opinion yeah do you, what sure. do you how do you feel about that she's funny I mean everybody in the cast is funny I'd love I'd actually love if they do a Daniel Craig spinoff I'd love to see them bring Lakeith back oh like, yeah bring, yeah and bring the other cop I forgot who played the other cop but like have them just kind of like oh man that was, that was mm-hmm. such a good time working with you I wanted to keep keep that going that'd be hilarious too like especially now you mentioned Lakeith, Keith and I, I can't remember the other cop's name but he yeah. was a, a he was a, another great addition funny side oh, character yeah, had like yeah. those one liner comments that mm-hmm. hit every time so mm-hmm. I would love to see another movie in that knives out universe come on so yeah. break, and this make is it. one of the biggest movies Lionsgate has had in a long time oh they've really had like a lot of, you know they've had hits and misses over the past mm-hmm. years but this is one of the biggest hits so I can't even see them not wanting to continue to this. dive dive back into that maybe it doesn't it's so like we got a Thanksgiving or it wasn't like Thanksgiving theme but mm-hmm. maybe they can like family, tr- family theme, theme. Yeah. yeah so I would, Christmas one Christmas one yeah yeah, 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 they, yeah. They, they, there's yeah. there's a whole bunch of ideas that they have there's a plethora of ideas mm-hmm. it's a plethora that's a big word I've that's been a, using that yeah, lately hey my boy's been reading <laughs> Barely. All right. <laughs> now, the next question is from Instagram. It is Hope for Goni. He asks, hey, with Disney Plus on the incline, do you think Disney Channel will dissolve out? Also, growing up, what was your to-go-to Disney series? Hashtag Collider Mailbag. Um, yeah, no, I don't see Disney Channel ever phasing out. Nah. I think Disney Channel is like always going to be a staple. As long as there's still ca- cable might phase out. Right. But then I still think they'll continue the programming of Disney Channel on Disney Plus if that were to ever happen. But I really don't see cable ever fully going away. Um, only because like there's so much money still in advertisement. There's so much money still in um, having a TV network outside of a streaming platform. Right. So it's good to have multiple avenues. Um, in terms of uh, like what I grew up watching, um, I loved That's So Raven. Yeah. Um, I loved um, I loved Wizards of Waverly Place. Bro, Selena. yes. Um, of course, like even Stevens is one too. Shia, salute to Shia. He, he's been killing it for so many years. Um, so yeah, those those are some of my favorites. And me and RB3 were on the same age. So those are essentially yeah. the the same the same type of shows. And, mm-hmm. and then That's So Raven. I recently, if you haven't been on, like on Twitter, like people have been really diving back into that show. And at the time, like it seemed like Disney didn't care because there have been so many like little comment, like Raven, uh, Raven Simone's character. There have been like, catching them cussing and stuff in the in the mm-hmm. background that, that that just made it and I think that's hilarious. Like if you go back yeah. and rewatch those mm-hmm. now that you're an adult, it it the some of the jokes and some of the one liners, it it's incredible. It yeah. So different. and then like the uh, and then speaking of that's so raving, we got Corey in the house. That was another one oh, that yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that was, that was a go. great that, show. that was, that was uh, great. man, that another one, uh, American Dragon. Oh yeah, American Dragon, Jake Long. That was my mm-hmm. show, bro, growing up. And mm-hmm. I know. And then, like one day, I can't. I remember. You remember that one? The the when there was a new like season, and it like the format completely changed. He's yeah, like, it was different like CGI. An, yeah, different yeah, animation. Yeah, that yeah, that completely yeah. threw me off. I got yeah. used to it after a while, but that just like that initial shock. That was like I felt like I lost my childhood. I think that's kind of yeah. I think that's kind of where I fell off of that show. Yeah, yeah like the I, first two seasons, and it's um Jackie Chan's like the main yeah. voice in that too. So it's like. Yeah, it always had that like real martial arts like feel to it. I loved it for that. But I, I, I still I stuck around after the the format change. I, I, it took a little while to get used to. But yeah, I, I honestly don't ever see the Disney Channel going out because even though I like personally don't. I, I personally don't use cable, but I don't ha- like check the channel as much as like I should, I guess. But mm-hmm. I know they're still producing like content that are like people our age or kids are that were our age when they, we first found out about Disney. Mm-hmm. Like they're watching they're that channel. It. Like there's the Descendants franchise. They have a lot of different things that they're still offering. So I don't think I could see Disney Channel ever fading out. And I think if anything, it's important to keep something like Disney Channel because 
what we see on Disney Plus is they're putting stuff that we loved as a kid on right. Disney Channel on Disney Plus to sell for the adults. I think they got to keep that cycle going. I think right. they got to keep the kids who are watching Disney Channel now. Probably in like 10 years, they're going to make like a, you know, a, a new movie for, uh, was it The Descendants? Or? Yeah, 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 Descend yeah, like a Descendants 5 or something. And speaking mm -hmm. of that, that's interesting that you say that, like how they can make, they can create, once they get to that point of those kids are like older, they can create, reboot and re, re, reuse that content, like High School Musical, like yeah. how we grew up with that. Now they're doing a series of that, that kind of- The if, Kim Possible. Right, exactly. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I didn't watch that. I didn't did watch you, the movie. Did you watch that? Yeah, I didn't watch that. show though, yeah, the, show the, the, the show was dope. The yeah. show was dope, but yeah, I did not, that that movie, the new live action movie, that wasn't geared towards our audience. So yeah, yeah, we're yeah. not. I, I'm, yeah, I'm not exactly. Yeah. yeah, I'm not. Yeah, you can't criticize something made for kids. But yeah, I'm not. I wasn't going to get. I'm not going to give that a chance. Um. So for the next question, it's coming from Twitter. Bet. It's um from J Scott for real. Um. He said he asked the Mandalorian story feels incredibly well suited for a video game narrative. Could Favreau be the right guy to finally deliver a video game adaptation that is received well, both critically and financially? If so, what series should he tackle? So this is an interesting question, but uh, and shout out to Jay Scott Farrell. He's one of uh, the main people that are in our movie talk chats and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. appreciate the support. But um, yeah, I would definitely I think he could definitely do a great video game type video game type movie or a series. One thing I the first idea I had for John Favreau, especially in the Star Wars universe, I know it's real fresh, but Jedi Fallen Order to me mm -hmm. would make the perfect TV series. And you can have Cameron Monaghan be the since he voices a character, does a mocap for him. You could have him just jump right into the Disney Plus series and have it because it's based off of his likeness and whatever. So I would definitely I think that would be a great story to tell in the Star Wars Disney Plus franchise that they're trying to build. I think that that's the perfect story. You can have John Favreau direct that, be the showrunner for that, make it three or four seasons. I don't know how long he can draw it out, but I think it, that would be a great approach. And speaking of, um, I just want to give a shout out to Angry Birds too, because that was one of my that was mm. a, a, one of my favorite movies of the year. That currently is a highest rated video game movie because it's technically oh, wow. a video game okay. yeah, so it's, it's the highest rated video game movie right now with i can't remember the actual score but go see it because i'm only mentioning that because i've been quoted a few times but oh, that's what's up but yeah, that's, but, but, uh, yeah. Got quoted i got quoted yeah, 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 yeah. But, but i actually really did enjoy the movie but yeah. that's currently the the highest video game but i would like to see a actual video game that's like on like a console a console game, a console yeah. game. Yeah. so i, I want to see I, like i'm uncharted i think is the next one uncharted or i guess the witcher one. technically for netflix but a movie yeah. mm -hmm. uh, i think uncharted's the next one so what what do you think um for me like i i um one of my favorite series growing up uh was the kingdom hearts franchise mm. kingdom hearts one and two i didn't get around to playing three yet because it just came out but um John Favreau obviously has a real connection to Disney and Disney properties and obviously with the Disney Corporation because he's been doing stuff with Marvel and Star Wars and all right. that. I would kind of like to see him do a Kingdom Hearts movie. I don't know how the Ooh. rights would work out with the final the Final Fantasy characters. Um, you know, maybe, maybe, you know, they do cross over into a movie adaptation. Maybe they don't. Or maybe if they do have a Final Fantasy, maybe that's the way they introduce a Final Fantasy movie franchise if they do a Kingdom Hearts. Ooh. Because Kingdom Hearts has like the most iconic Disney characters. It's so easy to market. It is. And then if you maybe get people invested through that, maybe you could get a Final Fantasy series that spawns off of that. Um, but yeah, I, I, I think he could deliver something really highly crude. I mean, he obviously, most of the things he touched turns into gold. Mm -hmm. um, John Favreau, at least, uh, I really dug the Jungle Book. I didn't love. I didn't like the Lion King, um, but I, I liked it, it. Yeah, but it made a lot of money. It made, it made shit. Yeah, money. <laughs> yeah, it made a lot of money. And the Mandalorian is obviously killing it too. So yeah, if if we get a good Kingdom Hearts movie, especially with the Disney brand, behind yeah, it, that, I, mean, I think that'd be fire. That'd be hell, great, damn, yeah. that I, hell yeah, so, sign me up for that. I, I'd rather a Kingdom Hearts game. And if you want, I got the I got the third one. If you want, you got the third one. Oh, yeah, 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 for All sure, right. for sure. All right, the last question of the day is from Rumple Still. Skins, he asked, "Kudos on hosting, uh, oh, kudos on hosting Dorian Parks. You got the game, man. Thank hey. you, fam. Uh, question: Thoughts on introducing MCU's uh, Fantastic Four in the next Ant Man, and who slash actors would you pick? Break the paradigm. Thanks, favorite bread, German sweet bread. Oh, that was a bread hey. joke. I'm all, I'm all about getting that bread. So what do, that what do you bread. what do you think, RB three? Um, well, okay, I don't really like them introducing the Fantastic Four in Ant Man. I'm being 100 percent honest. Like, I think there's you could do a really great Fantastic Four movie. I know they tried it a bunch of times, so that's yeah. why they're not doing it. It yeah. makes business sense on why they wouldn't do it. But it's, to me, it's like the easiest kind of concept to make a movie out of um, because 
you know, these are characters that came out in the 1960s, right? And, right. Um, but now they represent something completely different. The whole idea of, like, family and family dynamics means something completely different in, like, today's era. So I think, like, for me, like, here's... Let me give you a short Fantastic Four picture. All right, I'm listening. If, 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 if I had a Fantastic Four movie, I would have them start the movie in the 1960s. Um, and then once they... The whole idea is that they're trying to get to space, like, they're trying to participate in a space race right. and Reed Richards is like creating his own thing. They launch into space, they get caught in the, in the phantom zone, they come out and they're in the modern era. So they're from the actual 1960s, like the characters in the comics. So they have to reacclimate to modern times. And that would be the conflict of the, of the story. It's not like a big grandiose superhero thing. It's more of a, a family film because the, I think what, People often say The Incredibles is like the best Fantastic Four movie because mm -hmm. it hones in on the idea of family. Um, now, that being said, though, Ant Man is a family man, so that that could be a good way to do it. Um, yeah. But yeah, I don't know. I don't. Yeah. So with that, I I, I agree with you. With I rather them be introduced either in their own movie, but I, I I wouldn't want them to see be introduced in Ant Man three just because I feel like the Ant Man not not Ant Man one but Ant Man two has already been used as as a, as a setup for another movie or another like big thing. So I'd rather Ant Man three just be focused on Scott and Hope and what they're trying to accomplish in the story, what they're trying to do a mission or something like that, rather than oh here's the Fantastic Four. Also let's let's see them like how they pop like how are we gonna work with them or whatever. I'd rather them just be introduced something else and have Ant Man three be the the Thor Ragnarok of the Ant Man franchise where mm -hmm. it doesn't I, I personally don't think it needs like revitalization or whatever. But yeah, the second one was just it felt more like a setup rather than its own movie. Mm -hmm. So I'd rather the third one be like focused on Ant Man, focused on uh I'm blanking the wasp, uh, mm -hmm. Ant Man and the Wasp, but like on a bigger scale instead right. of just oh let's set up another storyline for a future movie. And then exactly. I, I would rather it be more of them them setting up uh, their daughter or not their daughter, but his daughter Cassie Lang to become uh, to become stature and then mm -hmm. use her in the Disney Plus series for a Young Avengers or something. Mm -hmm. So I'd rather mm -hmm. Ant Man three be the catalyst to set up Young Avengers, if anything, rather than them being introduced into the Fantastic, introducing Fantastic Four. Right. But I don't know. He's telling us to who would you pick as the actors? Man, my my to go to, and he says break the paradigm. I'm not sure if if, if he means like don't talk about mm -hmm. John Krasinski, but my my actors are always gonna. I think John Krasinski and Emily Blunt. I, they've been the main fan cast for a lot of people, and mm -hmm. I think that's yeah. that's the perfect to go I, to it's, for. It's, it's so perfect because they're already married. So yeah, there's exactly, already chemistry exactly, there. exactly. Yeah, um, I I personally I'm I'm I've just been kind of searching through fan castings as researching this question. One that I think I would love to see in a Marvel movie, honestly, guy is Brad Pitt. And I think Brad Pitt can kind of perfectly fit into that role of, of Reed Richards to some Ooh, extent. Did um, not think about that. Yeah, I mean, mm. that's just, you know what I mean? But I, if, if I, I could see that happening, but I could also, you know. And then, you know, one of the problems that people had with the, uh, with the 2015 version is that they cast a black bad. dude. Well, yeah, it was bad. But, <laughs> you know, the, some of the more less woke people have problems with the fact that uh, Johnny Storm was black. Yeah. Um, the way I'd see you'd curve that is if you cast uh, Sue Storm, his sister, as, as, as black, as black too. too. So I'd, I'd love to see I'm down. maybe um, maybe some someone like, a, 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 I don't know, Zoe Kravitz has been in the Marvel Universe thus far? No, she hasn't. She yeah, hasn't. Maybe somebody like that. Zoe would be, oh, yeah. uh, oh man, but she's Catwoman now, bro. But she's Catwoman Damn, now. I mean, I, they're crossing, they're crossing that's shams true, a that's lot. True, they're crossing that's shams true. a lot. Um, you know, uh, I'd love to see also like Remy Malik as uh, as um, as Johnny Storm. Dog. Yeah, because it's, it's uh, you know, he's obviously an Oscar winner. Um, but the whole thing of like Johnny Storm being like this whole like charismatic, like confident guy, I'd actually love to see Remy Malik kind of pull, like, pull that yeah, off. Cause we've all, most of the roles I've just seen him in are more dark, like, more mysterious, mm -hmm, more like mm -hmm. awkward type roles. So to see him try to do a 180 and him like be charismatic and optimistic and outgoing, like a big, a big, like Chris Evans personality from the original movies. Yeah. That mm -hmm. would, that would be something amazing. Hell yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm down for that. Let's, yeah. let's make that happen guys. I'm so down for that. But, um, let us know who you would like to see in, uh, the Fantastic Four movies. Would, do you want them to be introduced in Ant-Man? Let us know in the comments below, but I think that's all we have for today's uh, questions guys thank yeah. you so much for sending them in make sure you uh, always we'll put them out like monday tuesday hashtag collider mailbag make sure to send in those questions and we'll read them off and i just want to say thank you again for letting me host this thank you roca uh thank you adam in the booth for switching for us we appreciate it and uh i'll see you next time maybe i don't know maybe i'll pop back in here and there <laughs> let me know in the comments what you thought of my hosting only nice comments so my, my ego can't handle heartbreak yeah, <laughs> but yeah. thank you again rb3 for letting uh, for joining me thank, thank you for having me brother and really where can they find it. you uh you can find me on uh youtube and uh 
uh, and the meaning of the meaning yeah, of podcast. That shit, bro. Yeah, meaning of podcast. We do that every week. This week we just put out our top ten films of the decade. Oh, so it's me and Ace and Sabrina. We talked all, all of our top ten films of the decade. What's your um, number ten? Um, my number ten. I guess what my number ten. I like Parasite. Parasite, all right, because it's new. Um, yeah. So check, be sure to check that out on First Cut is our YouTube channel and um, the Meaning of Podcast anywhere you want to find podcasts. And you can follow my personal accounts at Director RB Three on Twitter and Instagram. Hell yeah, brother! Thank you for stopping by. That's and right. you know where to find me. I'm always here on Collider. Tag me on Collider's video. I'm their social media manager, so just tweet me there and you'll 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 get it at. So thank you guys for watching. Make sure to hit that like like and subscribe button, and we'll see you next time for more content. Let's get this bread. I'm sorry, that was corny.